I now give the floor to Mr. Abdul Abari. Merci. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, as I begin my statement, I would like to address my sincere congratulations to you on your presidency of the Council and wish you every success um, during the month. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the Council, I'm very happy to present to you the 26th report of the Secretary General on the situation in Central Africa and the activities of the Regional Office of the United Nations for Central Africa, UNOCA, contained in document S-Stroke 2024 420 I welcome the participation in the work of the Council of His Excellency, Monsieur Gilberto da Pierre de Verissimo, President of the ECAS Commission, with which UNOCA works closely. Over the last six months, during which time I went to Rwanda, Burundi, Chad, and Sao Tome Principe, and Angola and Cameroon, the central region uh, of, of Africa has seen positive and encouraging developments. In this regard, I would like to welcome the commitment of states of the sub-region and their determination to work to ensure the return of constitutional order to Chad and Gabon, particularly with the support for the facilitators of ECAS for the two countries, respectively, Presidents Felix Antoine Shishikedi Shilombo of the DRC and Faustin Alchange Touadera of the Central African Republic. The period covered by the current report we're happy to see, saw the transition, the conclusion of the transition in Chad with the adoption of a new constitution by referendum in December 2023 and the holding of a presidential election on the 6th of May. According to several observers, the election was conducted under good conditions despite some isolated incidents which, though they are regrettable, did not compromise the orderly conduct or the credibility of the elections. However, we would point out the difficult environment in which Chad finds itself, and this recalls to us the need to continue with our support to the Chadian authorities to assist the country as it searches for stability, particularly at this new point in its history. That's where we plan to support the talks with the political and military groups that have not signed the Doha peace agreement in order to strengthen efforts at peace and reconciliation undertaken by the Chadian authorities. In Gabon, the transition has reached an important turning point, with last April there being an inclusive national dialogue held. This led to a series of recommendations that translated the aspirations of the Gabonese people to open a new chapter. After this dialogue, the Gabonese authorities undertook concrete action for return to constitutional order with the creation of a national constitutional committee uh, tasked with drafting a constitution and a draft electoral code. The international community, under the auspices of the United Nations, through the intermediary of the group of Friends of Gabon that we established, has expressed its willingness to support the authorities in the implementation of inclusive reforms. Uh, stressing dialogue. In Saltame Principe, significant progress has been made in the reform of the justice and security sector with the signing of the agreement between the authorities and the Peace Building Commission. An agreement which is the culmination of our support for the government of Saint Tome in its efforts to reform its justice and uh, security sectors since the regrettable events of November 2022. And this follows on from the recommendations of the joint evaluation mission carried out by the United Nations and ECAS in April 2023, and which was signed uh, during the visit of the President of the Peace Building Commission to Saint Tome last May. Around $2.5 million will be released by the Peace Building Fund, translating into commit the, to fund the commitments undertaken at the meeting of the Peace Building Commission and the Government that took place in New York in January 2024. On the socio-economic front, we would note that during the summit, the heads of state and government of ECAS 
meeting in Malabo in Equatorial Guinea on the 15th of March last, uh, it was there that the states of Central Africa lifted their sanctions against Gabon, making it possible to return to the family of ECAS, and they focused on regional economic integration, particularly the oper operationalization of the common market. I remain convinced that facilitating intra-regional trade will play a crucial role in the promotion of stability and the prevention of conflicts in this sub-region. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the Council, the threat of non-constitutional change in governments is still a concern for the region, as can be seen uh, in the recent events uh, that have taken place in the DRC. In this regard, we would recall states, two states of the sub-region to keep open the political space guaranteeing a freedom of expression, the freedom of the press, and the freedom for political parties to carry out their activities. That is why, during the 56th session of the United Nations Standing Advisory Committee on Security Affairs in Central Africa, UNSAC, that was held in Kigali, Rwanda last November, the states of the region mandated UNOCA to organize a regional conference on the issue of non-constitutional governmental change and the underlying causes for this in order to think about responses that could be brought to these challenges. This conference will be held on the 1st and 2nd of July next in Sao Tome Principe. Uh, armed groups and violent extremists, on the other hand, continue to threaten the stability and the development of countries in the sub-region. Whether that's in the east of the DRC or in the Lake Chad Basin, terrorist groups continue to sow their reign of terror amongst the civilian population, particularly amongst women and children, and that despite the presence of military forces in the region. I welcome in this regard the efforts of the Joint Multinational Force, which despite the numerous logistical and financial challenges that it faces, continues to carry out successfully its operations against groups affiliated with Boko Haram and Daesh in the Lake Chad Basin. In Cameroon, that, that I visited from the 27th to the 30th of May last, separatist groups continue their violent actions against the civilian population in the regions of the Northwest and the Southwest with the imposition of dead towns and the closure of schools which limits access to education for thousands of children. Just last month, the separatist groups killed 14 people in, the, in these regions, including representatives of the state. During my last visit to Cameroon, the authorities reaffirmed their willingness to resolve the crisis themselves. However, I reiterated the um, preparedness of the United Nations to, to assist them in this task. During that same mission, I saw that all of the partners agreed that Cameroon it, has strategic importance for the region, not only in terms of stability, but also due to the fact that Cameroon remains the economic engine of the region and makes a significant contribution to monetary stability. Since it holds the greatest uh, for foreign exchange reserves in the region of the Central African Monetary Community, SEMAC. In the Great Lakes region, activities of the rebel group M23, as well as those of other groups and armed militia in the east of the DRC, have increased in recent months, leading to more than 7.2 million internally displaced, thus threatening peace and stability in this area. Indeed, the violent action committed by armed groups in the east of the DRC and in Burundi have stoked tensions between neighboring countries, particularly between Burundi and Rwanda, and between Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. It's in this context that the Secretary General's special envoy for the Great Lakes, Mr. Huang Xia, and myself, together carried out a mission in Burundi and Rwanda in order to propose our good offices given this rise in tensions. It's also within this framework that the special envoy, Huang Xia, special representative and head of MONUSCO, Bintu Keta, and myself in Luanda 
uh, during the UNSAC meeting, discussed how we could coordinate our efforts to support the Luanda process led by His Excellency Juan Manuel Gonçalves Lorenzo, President of the Republic of Angola, to work towards a return of peace in the east of the DRC. The Luanda meeting was an opportunity for member states of UNSAC to respectively uh, adopt a declaration on the mediation process and the fight against hate speech in Central Africa. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the Council, during the period covered by the current report, Central Africa has been facing an increase in extreme rainfall brought about by climate change that has had devastating consequences for human lives, infrastructure and socio-economic stability. Several countries of Central Africa and of East Africa have been struck by serious flooding caused by the strong rains. Angola, Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Congo have seen thousands of houses destroyed, populations displaced and infrastructure damaged. Kenya and Tanzania have also been affected, were also affected during that same period. It is clear that these kinds of crises linked to climate change are having devastating effects on the countries that are affected by them and pose significant security challenges for Central Africa. They sorely test the limited resources of governments, exacerbate socio-economic vulnerability that already exists and potentially could feed into social troubles and conflicts linked to access to resources indeed. The loss of the means of subsistence and the displacement of communities are likely to exacerbate socio-economic inequalities and to remove authority from the state. Displaced populations are also vulnerable to food insecurity and to epidemics. Uh, these are real challenges for security, both nationally and regionally, in addition to exacerbating uh, a humanitarian situation that is already of great concern indeed. During the period covered by the present report, the humanitarian crises in the region have multiplied, be that uh, due to climate phenomena or the result of armed violence. In this regard, the Sudanese crisis unfortunately continues to see so many atrocities, pushing so many refugees to Chad and also Central African uh, Republic. We'd like to inform the Council here that, uh, w being aware of the situation, the states mem member states of ECAS have decided to organize a humanitarian conference in Malabo next November. The governments of the sub-region, moreover, uh, are aware of the threat represented by climate uh, change for their stability and their development. Thus, on the 14th and 15th of March last, the government of Sao Tomé Príncipe organized a high-level conference on innovative climate financing, conservation and biodiversity and sustainable development. This concluded with a call for the preparation of a roadmap for a blue and green sustainable financing, stressing the importance of partnerships and the mobilization of resources. The sub-region of Central Africa, despite the progress that has been made, continues, moreover, to face the challenge of maritime security in the Gulf of Guinea. We are continuing our efforts to, at coordination and to fight this scourge uh, between ECOWAS and ECAS with the support of partners. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished members of the Council, I would like to conclude by stating that, as I stressed during the introduction of previous reports, UNOCA continues to work closely with the, with the ECAS Commission in order to better assist the sub-region in its search for peace, stability and development. Whereas we are of the important role played by the ECAS Commission in this regard, we will continue to explore, explore ways that uh, we can help the Commission so that it can better coordinate our, we can better coordinate our activities with the Commission for the promotion of democracy, the protection of human rights, including the participation of women and young people in decision-making processes, as well as the preservation of the environment, which are all essential elements to ensure prosperity and shared development, all peoples of Central Africa 
aspire to this. It's our hope that the renewal of UNOCA's mandate underway will take into account this ambition of the office to respond to the expectations of member states of, EC of ECAS for more cooperation and good offices in the years to come. I thank you for your kind attention. I now give the floor. Oh, I thank Mr. Abari for his briefing. I now.